Along the winding Nile River in northeastern Africa, one of history's greatest civilizations thrived for more than 3,000 years. The splendors of the ancient civilization were buried behind layers of these various cultures after Egypt was conquered by the Greeks, Romans, and then the Muslims. But they were rediscovered centuries later when archaeologists and historians adopted the field of study known as Egyptology. A surge in interest, and therefore tourism, has been sparked by numerous recent discoveries that have added to our understanding of the secrets of ancient Egypt. From the lavish tomb of Tutankhamun to the oldest footprints in North America, here are 20 most incredible archaeological finds. Number 20. A mummy that was recently discovered in Egypt. Eight limestone sarcophagi containing mummies that a site 25 miles south of Cairo were discovered by archaeologists in Egypt. Egypt's Antiquities Ministry had claimed that the mummies that were found were dating to the late period of around 664 to 332 BC. They were also reportedly covered with a layer of painted material known as cardinage in the form of a human. Three of the mummies are in good condition, according to a Facebook post by Dr. Mostafa Waziri, Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities. The mummies were discovered in a section of King Amanahat II Pyramid in Dashur Royal Necropolis. The ministry announced, courtiers and important people were said to be buried over a thousand years past, with the place remaining largely unchanged. The 526-acre Sutton Hu estate was purchased in 1926 by Edith Preeti. They learned that a sarcophagus in Luxor contained the mummy of a woman by the name of Puyu or Puya. A number of mummies were discovered in sarcophagi in another neighboring tomb, according to live science and this discovery in Egypt scares scientists. Yet I'm thrilled that Egypt is still revealing new information about its lengthy past. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Oldest Footprints in North America Thanks to these tiny seeds, the oldest human footprints in North America may redefine prehistory as we know it. The finding challenges our preconceived notions about prehistoric movement of people from Asia to the Americas. With the date of 23,000 years ago, prehistoric footprints may be the earliest ever discovered in North America. This is thousands of years earlier than what was previously thought to be the arrival of people on the continent. The tracks were discovered in 2009 by David Bustos, an archaeologist and resource program manager at New Mexico's White Sands National Park, on the edge of a lake that had long ago dried up and turned into a desert. On what is now known as Alkali Flat, prehistoric humans left their imprints in the mud, which over time fossilized and turned into rock. The U.S. Geological Survey scientists use radiocarbon dating on many seeds from the watery ditch grass called Rupia serosa that were embedded in the footprints. The marks were formed between 22,800 and 21,130 years ago, according to their analysis. The new study was released in the journal Science on Friday. It's improbable, but it's possible that the seeds collected ancient carbon that adjacent rocks had leached into the water in a reservoir effect. However, after dating hundreds of seeds, the researchers discovered that the ages were uniformly distributed, with older seeds at the bottom and younger ones at the top. Now, if the timing is accurate, it follows that prehistoric humans did not migrate to North America after the last ice age, but rather before or during it dramatically altering the history of both our species and the planet. Number 18. Richard III's Grave The last Plantagenet king of England, Richard III, was slain at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485 while battling Henry Tudor's army. The location and skeleton have revealed new information about the 32-year-old ruler who ruled from 1483 to 1485, despite history and Shakespeare demonizing Richard as a wicked, hunchbacked tyrant. A royal burial and a parade around the city were held to mark the transfer of King Richard III's remains to Leicester Cathedral a year ago. One of the most important archaeological discoveries in the past 10 years was the King's skeleton, which was discovered in 2012 under a city parking lot in Leicester. 
Leicester, with the help of a new 3D reconstruction made by the original archaeologist on the online modeling service Sketchfab, history buffs can now investigate the original burial location of the king in the car park. The model depicts the king's skeleton as it appeared in 2012, the year it was discovered by archaeologists. The gravesite can be rotated so that visitors can view it from any angle, including the bottom. Additionally, there are notes on the Sketchfab depiction that highlight significant discoveries made by researchers who examined Richard's skeleton regarding his life and passing. In order to preserve a permanent record of how the king's bones were laid out in the tomb before they removed them, they took images of the skeleton during the dig in 2012 from various perspectives, according to Matthew Morris, the University of Leicester archaeologist who made the discovery. These images weren't taken with 3D modeling in mind, but the program is highly flexible and can be used to generate this excellent model after the fact. Number 17. Madaba Map in the 1880s, tensions between Muslims and Christians in what is now Jordan resulted in a compromise. The Christians were permitted to move to the town of Madaba, provided they only constructed new churches in the locations of older ones. The idea made sense because Madaba had once been a thriving Christian metropolis during the Byzantine era, despite being a dusty, unimportant outpost in the Ottoman Empire at the time. The Greek Orthodox Christians who had just moved in wished to replace the old church of St. George with the new structure in 1884. After clearing the area around the former church, they made a startling discovery. A massive mosaic depicting a thorough map was hidden behind the debris. Its numerous colored fragments still represented Jerusalem and other locations in the Holy Land in stunning clarity, despite some damage. The Madaba map is both a work of art of Byzantine design and a practical map of Jerusalem and the Middle East in the 6th century. Although the finding delighted the locals, it took some time for the Greek Orthodox Christian authorities authorities in Jerusalem, which was still under Ottoman administration, to take notice. Cleopas Koiklides, the Jerusalem's Patriarchate's librarian, did not travel to Madaba to examine the discovery until 10 years later. In the middle of the 1890s, he immediately understood the value of the piece of art. Byzantine churches' mosaic floors typically included pictorial representations of cities and landmarks. Even though the Madaba mosaic features realistically depicted buildings and colorful pictures of items and animals, its design, a bird's eye view of the area, was distinctive. Number 16. The Serapium of Alexandria The Temple of the Serapium, the most well-known tourist destination in Alexandria, is located precisely between the Amud al sawari tomb area and the plateau of Qom al shokafa Its history dates back more than 2300 years, specifically to the reign of the male monarch who served as the founding head of the Ptolematic state in Egypt after Alexander the Great's death in 323 BC. The temple originally had a simple and understated Greek-style design, but with Ptolemy II, who came to power in 284 BC, it started to be filled with Egyptian architectural features, and he also added a fantastic library, smaller to the bar, but it was unquestionably more well known because it held more than 42,000 rolls of papyrus. It was once thought by the Egyptians to be a place for pilgrimage reflecting the cultural trinity witnessed by the Bride of the Mediterranean during the centuries BC. However, once the Christian faith arrived in Egypt, the Egyptians treated it as a house of idolatry and destroyed it, leaving little behind. Nevertheless, it demonstrates the greatness of the civilizations that rolled over it, allowing the renowned traveler, Ibn Battuta, to pass by. However, Emperor Theodosius, I ordered its total destruction in 391 AD after deeming it a symbol of paganism. Nothing remains now to shed light on these areas. Number 15. Knossos Near the northern shore of Crete, just south of the present-day Heracleion, is where the Palace of Knossos can be found. It was constructed by a culture we now refer to as the Minoans and is around 150,000 square feet, 14,000 square meters, in size or more than two football fields. In ancient times, there was a town surrounding it. 
the location gained notoriety after it was excavated and restored by a group of under the direction of British archaeologist Arthur Evans in the early 20th century. Despite the palace having been excavated more than a century ago, there are still a lot of unanswered issues regarding it and its inhabitants. For instance, there is scholarly disagreement on the palace's chronology. The palace's construction appears to have started around 1950 BC. However, there may have been earlier constructions. Around 1700 BC, the so-called first palace was destroyed, perhaps by earthquakes, and a second palace was erected on top of it. Scholars have recently questioned the extent of the devastation of this first palace nevertheless. Number 14. Otzi what is known about the Z, the Iceman, 30 years after his discovery? The remains of the guy who was slain in the Alps 5,000 years ago are regarded as Europe's most famous mummy, and they continue to provide information about Neolithic life as well as insights into contemporary health. The most well-known mummy in Europe was found face down in the ice on the shore of a lake two miles above sea level in the Zal Alps that separated Austria and Italy 30 years ago. The leathery remains of Z the Iceman, who was naturally preserved by more than 5,000 years of sun, wind, and freezing temperatures, quickly gained international attention and there was focus on countless books, documentaries, and even a feature film that detailed his life in Neolithic Europe and his violent demise. At the South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology in Bolzano, Italy, where his aged body is stored in a specially made cold chamber kept at a constant temperature of negative 21.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Z is now being meticulously cared for by researchers. His remains are sprayed with sterile water four or five times a year to maintain the wet mummy status and build an ice protective exoskeleton. Number 13. Mohenjo-Daro the inhabitants of the ancient Indus civilization metropolis of Mohenjo-Daro were expert urban designers with regard to the regulation of water, as evidenced by a carefully constructed street grid and a complex drainage system. But it's still unclear exactly who lived in the historic city in the modern-day Pakistan during the 3rd millennium BC. There are no grand palaces, temples, or monuments in the city. There is no blatantly visible central palace of power or proof of a monarch or queen. Evidently, modesty, order, and cleanliness were favored. Copper and stone tools as well as pottery were standardized. Seals and weights imply a strictly regulated trading system. Artifacts like ivory, lapis, carnelian, and gold beads, as well as the baked brick city structures themselves, are evidence of the city's riches and stature. The closest thing to Mohenjo-Daro has a temple is a waterproof pool called the Great Bath, built on top of a mound of soil and held in place by walls of baked brick. It seems to imply an ideology built on cleanliness, according to Posel, a National Geographic explorer. The city was also filled with wells, and almost every home had a bathroom and drainage system. Number 12. The Antikythera Mechanism an ancient shoebox-sized machine known as the Antikythera Mechanism is frequently referred to as the world's oldest computer since it can calculate astronomical computations. The remnants of the mechanism, which were found in 1901 by sponge divers off the Greek island of Antikythera, are now on display at the National Archaeological Museum in Athens. In a 2021 study that was published in the journal Scientific Reports, researchers stated that only 82 fragments, or around one-third of the original mechanism, remain in existence today. Around 2,200 years ago, it was constructed. The device was able to carry out a variety of computations, follow the motions of the Sun, Moon, and five other planets, and even predict when sporting events like the Olympics will be held. It was a mechanical computer made of bronze gears that made astronomical predictions by using groundbreaking technology by automating astronomical cycles and theories. Since the Antikythera mechanism was discovered, scholars have been trying to understand this device, and although they have made significant progress, many questions remain unanswered. For example, researchers still aren't who made the mechanism. Some scholars have posited that the Greek inventor Archimedes was the mechanism's creator, but this is uncertain. Number 11. The Lost City of Troy 
The public's love of Homer's epic stories has been sparked by Heinrich Schliemann, the dedicated archaeologist that discovered Troy. It's continued with the recent discovery of Tanea, an ancient Greek city thought to have been founded by a Trojan War survivors. The German archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann traveled to Turkey in the late 19th century on an odd mission. He was excavating a tell, a man-made mound that hides long-forgotten villages. Only a few experts were familiar with the Hisarlik location. But while Schliemann dug, he had his sights set on Troy, the most well-known city in classical literature. Problematically, Troy may not have even existed. The Iliad and the Odyssey, two epic poems written by the celebrated Greek poem Homer in the 8th century BC, helped popularize the Trojans and their city. These literary works described a 10-year battle between Greece and Troy that was fought by legendary figures, including the rulers Priam and Agamemnon, the soldiers courageous Hector and powerful Achilles, and their survivors cunning Odysseus and devoted Aeneas. The poems describe brutal combat, fantastical journeys, brave acts, and tragic outcomes. Was Troy a genuine location though? Schliemann sought to establish this, so he did. Homer's epic stories are genuinely acknowledged to have taken place at Hisarlik. According to studies, there are actually nine Troys atop the 30 meter high 100 foot mound, each of which was constructed over the ruins of the one before it. The most likely option for Homer's Troy, according to archaeologists today, is Troy 6, which is the sixth site when counting from the bottom up. Number 10. Tutankhamun Tomb a crew led by British Egyptologist Howard Carter started digging up Tutankhamun's tomb in Egypt Valley of the Kings on November 4, 1922. Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun, often known as King Tut, ruled from 1333 BCE, when he was just nine years old, to his death in 1323 BCE. Tutankhamun was mummified after his death and interred a tomb adorned with artwork, jewelry, and other valuables as per tradition. The tomb was swiftly covered by shifting desert sands, and it remained mostly undiscovered for more than 3,000 years. Carter's team discovered the first stairway step on November 4th that same day. By the end of November, an antechamber, a treasury, and the tomb's actual door had been discovered. The following day, his team had completely exposed the stairs. On November 26th, Carter saw a chamber full of gold treasures after poking a little hole in the door. The sarcophagus housing Tutankhamun's mummy wasn't made public until much later. Number 9. Sutton Hu Ship the UK location of Sutton Hoo is close to Woodbridge, Suffolk. It's located about seven miles inland and gives the adjoining town of Sutton its name. Although there is evidence that the region has been inhabited since the Neolithic era, Sutton Hoo is best known for its use as a graveyard throughout the 6th and 7th centuries. During this time, Anglo-Saxons lived in Britain. It was only accessible to the most powerful and wealthy members of society and contained about 20 barrows, burial mounds. According to the conventions of the time, these individuals, mostly men, were buried separately with their most priceless goods and different ceremonial artifacts. Over a thousand years passed, with the place remaining largely unchanged, the 526-acre Sutton Hu Estate was purchased in 1926 by Edith Pretty, a rich, middle-class woman. After the death of her husband in 1934, Edith became increasingly intrigued by the idea of excavating the ancient burial mounds which were located approximately 500 yards from the main house. In 1938, Edith asked the area's self-taught archaeologist Basil Brown to start excavating the burial mounds after speaking with local archaeologists. Brown returned in 1939 and discovered the remnants of a 7th century Saxon ship after promising early explorations that year. While the ship itself was a significant discovery, further research indicated that it lay over a burial chamber. It entered a new area of archaeological discoveries as a result of this news. Number 8. Olduvai George Within the Ngorongoro Conservation Area in northern Tanzania is the Olduvai Gorge, paleoanthropological site, in the eastern Serengeti Plain. It's a two-branch, steep-sided ravine with a total length of around 30 miles, 48 kilometers, and a depth of 295 feet, 90 meters. Deposits that have been uncovered in the gorge's sides date from roughly 2.1 million to 15,000 years ago. 
the deposits have produced the fossil remains of over 60 hominins, ancestors of humans, providing the longest known archaeological record of the history of the stone tool industry as well as the most continuous record of human evolution over the last 2 million years. A UNESCO World Heritage Site was established for Olduvai Gorge in 1979. Although Olduvai Gorge was frequently been referred to as the Cradle of Mankind, the Cradle of Humankind is really a World Heritage Site in South Africa. The discovery demonstrated that Africa was where hominins evolved. At Olduvai, specimens of the more human-like species Homo habilis were also discovered. These included OH-24, a skull that earned the nickname Twiggy because it needed to be rebuilt after being flattened. Number 7. Cave of Altamira as an addition to the Altamira Cave, which was inscribed in 1985, 17 Paleolithic painted caves were added to the list. The property will now be listed as Altamira Cave and Northern Spanish Paleolithic Cave Art. The site is a prime example of Paleolithic Cave Art, which flourished in Europe between 35,000 and 11,000 BC, from the Urals to the Iberian Peninsula. These caves are especially well preserved because of their deep corridors, which are shielded from outside climate effects. The caves are recognized as both the earliest examples of human accomplishment in art and as works of creative brilliance. Additionally, they are listed as remarkable examples of a crucial period in human history as well as an outstanding testimony to a cultural tradition. The Cave of Altamira continues to stand out for its aesthetic quality and technical craftsmanship despite hundreds of discoveries being made across the five continents. It is regarded as a singular artistic representation of this time period and more specifically the Magdalenian culture. The merits of Altamira are shared, complemented, and enhanced by other 17 caves, which together offer a whole range of Paleolithic art, each with its own significance and facilitating a deeper comprehension of phenomenon. This artwork was a reflection of how society, economy, and culture have changed over time. Homo sapiens are anatomically modern humans first appeared in Europe more than 40,000 years ago. Since then, they have evolved cognitively and in terms of social organization. As a result, we may learn important details about their way of life, especially their symbolic beliefs, from the rock art they created. Number 6. Terracotta Army The Terracotta Army was built to serve as an afterlife guard for the tomb of China's first emperor. The guard warriors of the first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, are represented by thousands of life-size intricate terracotta soldier sculptures. They were divided into individual pieces, fired, assembled, and painted. A must-see is the Terracotta Army Museum in Xi'an. It's regarded as one of the most important archaeological sites in the entire globe and as most of the important find of the 20th century. Each soldier and horse is armed with a long spear, dagger, and halberd and is arranged in a rectangle formation facing east. Three rows of infantry standing at the army's easternmost end appear to be the vanguard. 38 horse-drawn chariots are following closely behind the main group of armed armored soldiers. One row of figurines representing the army's defense wing is present on the sides facing the south, north, and west. One would feel the ground tremble as the men advanced in front of a, such of a massive ancient army array. Rows of standing and kneeling archers make up another unit of the tomb, followed by a chariot war array a mixed force standing rectangle array of infantry, chariot and troopers, and finally, a large number of soldiers wielding weapons. A precise battle array is formed by the four units. What makes this event special is the fact that each figure is unique in terms of its expression, clothes, hairdo, motions, and facial features, providing an abundance of richly detailed artifacts for the study of that era's military, cultural, and economic history. Number 5. The Dead Sea Scrolls 75 years have passed since the Dead Sea Scrolls, which had been kept secret for 2000 years, first came to light. A total of 900 manuscripts dating from 250 BC to AD 68 were found in 11 caves in Qumran, on the northern side of the Dead Sea, between 1947 and 1956. Ancient scrolls were also discovered in the Judean Desert during the 1950s and 1960s in places like Wadi, Murabat, Nahal, Hever, and the historic castle of Masada. Jewish religious texts and Bible literature were included in these scrolls which came from the Qumran and other places. 
The Dead Sea Scrolls are a group of mostly incomplete texts that have profoundly altered our understanding of Second Temple Judaism and thrown new insight into the Hebrew Bible's text and interpretation. With the exception of Esther, every book of the Hebrew Bible is represented by the one or more than 200 scrolls from the Qurman Caves. These manuscripts, however, are mainly incomplete. Some rather big quantities of text preserved, while others have only very little bits. The Great Isaiah Scroll, which dates to around 125 BC and is the oldest known copy of the book of Isaiah, is the only virtually complete copy of biblical book from Qumran. It should come as no surprise that the approximately 100 Qumran manuscripts give a good representation of the Torah. Other biblical works with numerous copies include Psalter and the book of Isaiah. These ancient biblical scrolls from Qumran represent our oldest biblical manuscripts and are extremely valuable, filling a major gap in the history of the biblical text and providing a window into the condition of the text during what is called the Second Temple Period. Number 4. Pompeii North of the Sarnus River's mouth, on a spur created by an ancient lava flow, was where Pompeii was situated. Along with Pompeii, neighboring towns including Herculaneum, Stabidae, Tori and Nunziata, and others, were also devastated. In 1997, Torre Annunziata, Herculaneum, and Pompeii were all named UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Between 10,000 and 20,000 people lived in Pompeii at the time of its demise. To the east is the contemporary town of Pompeii, which houses the Basilica of Santa Maria del Rosario, a popular destination for pilgrims. Around midday on August 24, 79 CE, Mount Vesuvius erupted violently, spewing volcanic debris over the city of Pompeii and the following day blistering hot gas clouds. The city was covered in ash and pumice. Its structures were demolished and its inhabitants were crushed or asphyxiated. Pompeii was covered in ash for many ages, which preserved the remains flawlessly. The world was astounded to learn that these were sophisticated Greco-Roman cities that had been preserved in time they were finally discovered in the 1700s. A spectacular forum and an amphitheater were among the grand public structures discovered. Opulent villas and various types of homes from the 4th century BCE were also found. Some of the people who had taken refuge there had preserved bones. Others had been buried as they fled. Bakeries had been discovered with loaves still baking. The structures and their belongings provided insight into daily life in the classical world, arousing interest in the classical world in the 18th century. Number 3. Library of Ashurbanipal a collection of about 30,000 clay tablets and pieces engraved in the Mesopotamian writing style, cuneiform, is known as the Library of Ashurbanipal. Reed pens were used to inscribe texts into soft clay. The word cuneiform, which simply means wedge-shaped, comes from the writing's distinctive wedge-shaped strokes. The tablets were found in the remains of Nineveh, which was once the center of the vast Assyrian Empire and was controlled by Ashurbanipal from 669 CE to 631 BC. The ruins of the Assyrian royal libraries and archives were discovered during a series of excavations that took place between the 1840s and 1930s. Around 612 BC, fire engulfed Nineveh. The clay tablets, on the other hand, were typically cooked more thoroughly, making them one of the best preserved records from thousands of years of Mesopotamian history, whereas paper books are destroyed by fire. Nearly all of our knowledge about ancient Assyria prior to the library's discovery came from biblical accounts or the writings of classical historians. The story of the Assyrians was told in their own words through the thousands of cuneiform texts that were discovered with the uncovering of the library. These enable us to read in excruciating detail about the monarch's exploits as well as follow court intrigues, listen in on covert intelligence reports, follow rituals step by step, hear songs and prayers, and scroll through medical annuals. However, the Ashurbanipal's tablets continue to be primary source of, for the majority of what we know about the Mesopotamian scholarship of the period. Despite the fact that numerous tablets have been discovered at other sites over the past 170 years, Number 2. Lucy's Several Famous Fossils When Johansson received his PhD in 1974, he was 31 years old, a professor of anthropology in Cleveland, Ohio. 
He had already visited Ethiopia twice, first in 1972 for a reconnaissance mission to examine the century's geological features and fossiliferous deposits in the Afar area, and once in 1973 when he made his first human discovery a knee joint at Hadar, Dr. Johansson and had high hopes for the 1974 expedition's discoveries. And those hopes were increased when his Ethiopian colleague, Alima Yihu Afsfa, found three hominin jaws close to their Hadar camp. The finding of Lucy could be described as a funny bone story. The ulna or elbow bone was the first piece of Lucy's skeleton that Johansson discovered. Johansson could infer by the size and shape of Lucy's shattered ulna that it obviously belonged to a monkey and might very well be the petrified remains of a hominin. As they carefully combed the earth, Johansson and Gray were happy to find numerous other fossilized bone fragments, including pieces of a skull, mandible, ribs, pelvis, thighs, feet, and more. Scientists refer to the Hadar fossil locality where the fragments of Lucy's skeleton were found as Afar locality 288. At AL 288, Johnson and the rest of the 1974 field team collected all the fossil pieces they could discover. They noted the precise positions of the fossil bits, transported them back to their research camp, and examined them carefully. The Hadar field crew really had so many questions about these fossils. Number 1. The Rosetta Stone the Rosetta Stone is a granodiorite stele inscribed with the same inscription in these scripts, Demotic, Hieroglyphic, and Greek. To different individuals, it represents different things. During Napoleon's invasion of Egypt in July 1799, French soldiers discovered the stone in the city of Rosetta. East of Alexandria, close to the Mediterranean coast, was where Rosetta could be found. Officer Pierre-Francois Xavier Bouchard discovers the sizable inscribed stone fragment when Napoleon's troops were building fortifications. The significance of the juxtaposition of the hieroglyphic and Greek writings was immediately apparent to him, and he correctly assumed that each script was a translation of a single document. When the Greek text, describing how the Stila's text was to be published, was translated, it confirmed this assumption. This decree shall be inscribed on a stella of hard stone in sacred native and Greek characters. As a result, the Rosetta Stone was given that name after the location of its discovery. That's about it for today's video on 20 Most Incredible Archaeological Finds. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share it with your friends so that both of you and them can see more interesting videos like this. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. See you next time.